So now in the last video, we uh, used this uh, 3.6 volt Zener diode. Cathode is towards the more positive side. It's not uh, connected to anything though. Uh, anode down to the negative side. So that is parallel to this trim pot. So our output um, will be more fixed even as the supply voltage changes. I don't have the power supply over there. Um, but in uh, any case, it's going to hold, you know, close to about 3.6 volts across the trim pot, even as the supply voltage goes up. We used a resistor in the last video uh, from the positive supply. This is going to be far more effective right here. This is actually a current source uh, component. And um, the name of it, uh, it's on the uh, package, but uh, I think it's called a uh, current regulative diode. So you use it one way, it's not a rectifier diode. Um, it's actually, I think a JFET. Uh, but in case, we'll go over to uh, milliamps of a uh, current right there. And it's a one milliamp component. You should expect about one milliamp of current to flow through it. And I've been finding, I believe, uh, 0.86 milliamps of current. So slightly less right there. But uh, that should hold steady even as the supply voltage changes by quite a bit. We got four, and uh, I'm assuming it's okay to uh, go up to uh, 12 volts. I do have current limited to 10 milliamps of uh, current. If I accidentally put this in backwards, I don't think it limits uh, current. So just be aware of that. Um, but yeah, we're just looking that it's a current source. And um, so yeah, it does actually look like it went up a little bit right there. Maybe because it's warmer. Um, but you know, it's still holding pretty close to one milliamp of current. And uh, this is gonna drop some of the voltage that's gonna lower the current as well. So um, we'll zoom in a little bit. I'm gonna get this off of measuring current and get it to measuring voltage because that's all we really care about from this point on forward. We saw this is a little bit less than uh, one milliamp of current, even as I change the voltage by a lot. And then uh, we'll pop uh, this jumper out and now we have current flowing uh, through that, uh, you know, a little less than one amp right there, coming to the Zener diode and then going to ground. Also, some is going uh, through the trim pot right here. We have, again, uh, voltage. This will start beeping if I let it sit for too long. So I'm going to go back to uh, voltage. And I got the, uh, looks like the red probe first, this little alligator clip that uh, comes to a jumper. So I can just plug it in where we have our output. So now it's uh, extra important that we don't provide any uh, current from this output. It will drift a little bit. And sorry for that rubbing noise right there. And the voltage we're gonna get is in relationship to ground, uh, zero volts. So I'll plug that in right there. And we got uh, 0.716, it looks like. Now let's see what we got. Um, uh, so that's at the uh, 12 volts right there. Let's see uh, what we can get. It should be about 3.6 approximately when I go all the way up to the uh, maximum uh, voltage, which is actually less than I expected right there. Let's uh, go down in uh, voltage. And you can see, you know, it's holding a pretty steady right there. So yeah, it doesn't look like we have enough current flowing through to get us um, the 3.6 volts. That is, uh, that's very interesting. All right, so let's go uh, to two volts. Try to get it spot on two volts. And the current should be, um, let's break, break right above two, okay, 2.04, close enough. Uh, that's at four volts, five, and it changed a little bit, six. Now I think it will hold more steady. I think four volts was too low to go uh, for that Zener down. But yeah, there you can see. It's holding on to two volts really well right there. You know, not perfectly well, uh, but not too bad. So using that current source uh, turned out uh, a whole lot better. And looks like four. Four is pushing lower than uh, we should. For some reason, I thought four would be okay at uh, some point. And now, um, so yeah, apparently we can't go to 3.6. You must need more than one milliamp of current to get uh, the Zener uh, voltage up higher. Um, yeah, let's get it down to one, and uh, just above one right there. That looks better. And uh, what are we at? Yeah, we're at four volts right now. Let's uh, raise the power supply voltage. That's the voltage going to the rail. And so if we want to set one volt, you know, pretty solidly, there you can see, 
uh, even at 12 uh, volts or a voltage divider there it's breaking down what the uh, zener is even though it's not 3.6 apparently uh, but yeah it's holding one pretty well so as long as we stay below like half of uh, whatever the zener voltage is in this case it looks like it will you know really really hold steadily even over a really wide uh, voltage range so hopefully that made sense and um, so yeah let's put the trim pot all the way up and yeah I thought it would be higher than that uh, 2.7 uh, when it is a 3 volt uh, zener I can just go over here that should give us our zener voltage but yeah surprise it's that low so now I put the 1000 ohm resistor right here for every volt across it which will be the supply voltage minus in this case it looks like 3 volts right there so we should have about a volt across it we're gonna have about 1 milliamp of current flowing through it which uh, we saw this was uh, below one milliamp of current so that may be why we were getting slightly less uh, voltage build up across the zener diode uh, than we had before now it's well known that uh, 5 volt uh, like 5.1 5.6 volt zener diodes are uh, more solidly uh, providing their zener voltage over a range of currents uh, volt uh, versus especially the lower ones as you go up in uh, the zener voltage by a lot they drift quite a bit too um, but yeah we're looking at what the zener voltage is that we're getting so now um, we have uh, this much voltage across the zener diode uh, the rest of the voltage is across the one uh, kilo ohm uh, resistor so each extra volt across the one kilo ohm resistor we get uh, you know one milliamp of current flowing through it and the zener diode although a little bit will uh, go through the resistor as well but there you can see to actually build up uh, 3.6 uh, volts looks like we need about uh, 8 volts total right there so that would be um, like four and a half milliamps of current going through that zener diode before it uh, finally actually gets up to about 3.6 and it's uh, drifting a little bit more I'm surprised there's that much drift I should have uh, measured this sooner um, but yeah uh, any case this uh, may have been kind of a hard video to understand if uh, you haven't come across this before so uh, I didn't even I don't even know where to uh, explain any more uh, than that right now what uh, our goal was was to set the current through the Zener diode right there so that it always has about the same voltage across it and which we saw we can do with uh, this unfortunately it was less current than we needed I should have used a higher uh, current source one that uh, looks like uh, probably like five milliamps of current for this 3.6 volt zener diode before it will actually build up about 3.6 volts across it there we got 3.3 um, but you can see um, looks like we probably need nine volts right there so that's 3.6 across the zener diode and then that's out of nine so that's like five and a half milliamps of current it looks like you know just estimating through that zener dial before we get to three point uh, six so I actually uh, picked up a lot from this uh, I hope you were able to as well thanks for watching make sure you check out one of the other videos I'm posting the screen and check out the links down below always turn off the multimeter when you're done